Cue the music, let's go. I'm your boy, Ro, managing editor for the new OBB Legend and OG member of the Orange Bowl Boys, and welcome to another edition of Student of the Game. Well, I know it didn't end well, Miami Hurricanes fans, because, yep, the Duke Blue Devils beat the Hurricanes 45-21 to at Hard Rock Stadium, but it didn't end well. Sure started well, though. Inside the red zone, University of Miami in their 11-set personnel. Here's your one tight end. Here's your one running back. And you know what? They scored on this style of variety play against Virginia Tech last week in which they're going to do a play-action series and stay in a max look. They're going to keep the tight end to block. They're going to keep the running back in to block when you have a lot more to block and protect your quarterback. Give some time to get these routes. It's going to be a gun five. I'm going to show you what the route combination is right here. And look, this is an advantage inside the red zone and oftentimes what the tight set will allow you to do and when wide receivers are closer is you can run these drags across the middle of the field, try to create some confusion on the back end. You're going to have a low crosser and a high crosser, and when Duke stays in the zone, you're trying to leverage this DB right here. He has to make a choice, stay back or come up. In this case, he's going to let his crosser go by, stay in his area, and then Tyler's just looking, tries to get back out. It's too late. Bang. Oh, well, at least the opening drive looked pretty. All right, it's no secret if you've watched my channel for any period of time. You know I'm a big speed and space guy. You know I, I love and prefer the Baylor spread. It's something I've watched since the RG3 days. But there is advantages and disadvantages to when you come in close to the formation and then when you're touching sidelines. In this case, University of Miami has all 11 offensive personnel. Well, they're all inside the frame. And I love the little attention to detail of Will Mallory. Just pay attention to Will Mallory. I'm going to show you what it does. We're going to watch it first. Look, he comes in, and then he comes around. And I want to show you <laughs> who took that bait. We call that flow bait, right? You're trying to sell the play in one direction to really come back and kind of hit that on the backside. So it's the Mike linebacker. Watch. Watch the Mike linebacker. He's trying to read a key. He's reading the tight end. Oop, gets sucked in just enough. This allows... A little bit of a seal off, well-executed play, all right? That is one of the advantages of coming in close. You get a little bit of a diversification inside the run game, especially when you can use key around the perimeter, use the speed. Good pickup. Again, University of Miami early on looked good. Quick clip in one of the early momentum backbreakers. This is three times in four weeks for this young man, but have to, have to hold on to the ball. Now, I have the full confidence that the University of Miami knew exactly who Riley Leonard was. Obviously, he's one of the top ACC leading rushers in the whole league. But right here, University of Miami get victimized on a quarterback draw on third down. And here you go. And this is when I think it happens right here. Because when you have your nose tackle basically swing out and your linebackers crashing down reading the running back, now they go ahead and set up that quarterback draw, and you see the opening, right? One of the easier routes that the quarterback can always take to be effective as a rusher is just going straight ahead. And when he had that big window, a couple of missed tackles because they're out of position, and next you know his toughness, he scores. So again, swing the defensive tackle outside the A-gap, linebacker gets sucked out, I don't know where, and next thing you know there's the easy rush lane, and that's how that touchdown happened. Sure, the eight turnovers are going to highlight this film. However, third down defense for the University of Miami Hurricanes this week needs to improve. And just carrying over from the previous clip, here, just watch it. Swing out, swing out. I mean, that is too easy. Too easy. And this is how you get a quarterback killed. University of Miami were victimized by several sacks. And how did the Duke Blue Devils get home? Well, you heard me talk about the advantages earlier about being tighter to the formation, right? You have the ability to run crossers. You can have some cool end arounds, and we saw that. But when you come in close to the set, a lot of times you can put a defender in a situation where not only is he able to come in on a blitz, he's able to go ahead and cover, but at the same time, this is simulated pressure because University of Miami has a conundrum. Right now, Duke Blue Devils, to their respective left of their defense, is simulating a pressure front. Now, University of Miami has to account for if they actually come in on the blitz. Here's one, two, three, four. So how does the offensive line decide to block it? 
Well, from the left guard over, they're going to use slide protection to their right. So one, two, three, four. That leaves on the back end, left tackles kicking out in a man principle. Running back, this is your guy. Running back, this is your guy. The way the offensive line is blocking this, I'm telling you, this is your guy. Unfortunately, what happens? Well, Duke is now breaking off. That's what the simulated pressure is, and the blitz is actually coming from the other side. Running back knew he missed it because, look, he's throwing his hands up. He's like, oh, no, oh, no, right? And then what finishes it off? Again, it was the simulated pressure by Duke. Get the offensive line to overreact. They all come out, kick right. And look, the blitz is coming from here. You're closer to the quarterback. You have options. University of Miami, very ill-prepared there to handle that cat blitz, that simulated pressure look, sack. On the last clip, I said this is how you potentially get a quarterback killed. It's on this clip, unfortunately, that the quarterback gets hurt. And it's the same principle that Duke used on the last clip that gets home on this clip. University of Miami in 12-set personnel. Here's two tight ends, one running back. And when you motion the wide receiver into the formation, you have all 11 offensive personnel inside the frame. Now, it brings a lot of Duke defenders with it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Miami has a lot of numbers to account for. And again, the protection call that the University of Miami utilizes, well, they guess wrong. Because this time they're going to go ahead and block this straight up. There's no slide protection. They're just trying to block this up. And this is essentially going to turn into an empty look. Five wide receivers are going out. And when Tyler doesn't necessarily check it quick because this is an empty look, and you allow a safety and an unchecked end to go ahead, man, we we hope and pray you're okay, buddy. But again, when you're this close to the formation – and you have this much to account for, you have to get your line call absolutely perfectly right or it's going to be trouble. In this case, again, University of Miami blocks in. Too much to account for on the way out. And that's one of the fumbles. Again on these sacks, the University of Miami repeatedly are being victimized by the pressure package and pressure looks by Duke. And again, when you're closer to the formation, you're going to bring a lot of defenders with you. So a late walk-up cat blitz once again, and I refer to a cat blitz as a corner blitz. In this case, he's going to walk up late, and it's just going to create a problem for the University of Miami. Obviously, one of the defenders came back into zone coverage, and now they have a four-on-three advantage on the right side of your line. Jake Garcia, really no chance here, too, because nobody's looking for the ball. At this point, you're trying to get this downfield. He's got no release check down. Nobody's looking. He's trying to hit an out and up here to the rooster. It's already too late. Sack. Nothing you could do there. Again, no real plan how to handle these pressure fronts from Duke. So a little semblance of life here after the first half concluded. We're going to hit a big play touchdown. Ace gun, 11 set personnel, one running back, one tight end, two by two look. University of Miami has been doing this concept repeatedly after the bye week. And it's basically an all vertical concept with attached choice on the outside. The choice, well, if your DB comes up, you're going to go vertical. If your DB stays back, you're going to stay underneath. And that's exactly what you're going to see here because at the top of the screen, there's the sit down. Everybody else is running vertical. And when the DB walked up late, Jake Garcia finds it. Nice touch pass. This is a grown man's right here. He's going to go ahead, keep walking, wait for it, and bang. Colby Young is your leading receiver in terms of touchdown on the year. Now, let's look at the actual protection. Well, Duke's not blitzing on this one. Simple stunt here. Miami picks it up just fine. Just fine. Gave Jake Garcia all the time in the world. Great pitch and catch. Just needed a little bit more of that this week. After the big play, Kobe Young touched out. University of Miami Hurricanes are going to get on the board again with Will Mallory on this mesh concept. Here he is in line, 11 set personnel. And just sometimes the call you have, well, it's going to beat the call that the defense has, especially when you're having this rush defensive end. Well, 
he's responsible for covering Will Mallory one-on-one. Now, let's pay attention to the protection because that's kind of been the issue in the first half. Once again, yeah, Duke's walking it up late. They're going to bring pressure from the second level. And this time, the University of Miami from the center over, they're going to fan this protection. They're going to fan out to the right, fan out to the left. Center over is going to be responsible for this side. Left guard, left tackle on this side. They're responsible here, here. Your running back is responsible for Main Street. He's responsible for the first eight gap pressure. There it is. The second one's going to come untouched, but by that point, it's too late. And here's the mesh. A lot of backs turn. This is why this is such a good man beater. And again, that's a defensive end trying to catch Will Mallory. Will press play, and you're not going to catch him. Bang. Sometimes your play call just beats theirs. See, I'm a little confused to this in nature. Just simply when we decide to pass this off in potential zone, well, obviously when Duke motions across the formation, James Williams is going to go with that motion. He's going to match. He's in man coverage. So I'm watching this, and obviously University of Miami sending three, keeping a couple guys in to spy, rightfully so. They don't want to let Riley Leonard get away from him in this situation. And then this pass comes open real easy. And I'm like, all right, what happened? Okay, you saw the man coverage. Obviously, there was a pass off to Cam Kitchens. But we're going to see it from this angle right here. Because you got to watch this back, and I just simply don't understand this. Because remember, James Williams has this coverage right here. He's going in man coverage. And there's like a rhythm to it. One, two, three, ball out. Let's go ahead and get back over the top. But to who? James got that other guy in man coverage. He's one-on-one. So why did we break off there in that pass-off kind of a coverage? You know, like potential cover three principles. But once again, the rhythm. One, two, three, ball's going to be out. But let's just break away. I don't know. Unfortunate for the Canes here. That was a fourth and nine. I'm not saying this would have changed the game, but... The ball would have went the other way. I'm confused. Just this is undisciplined. I mean, you're going to have a motion coming out of the backfield. Okay, we're pointing. All right, simple. Just go ahead and redirect this. They're trying to signal right here. Right, this should kind of pass down. You're going to take this responsibility. This becomes the new responsibility here. But what simply cannot happen is, I mean, all three individuals are coming with this play fake. Ooh, not good. Too easy. Another third and four on a back-breaking drive. Just can't take the flow bait that bad. Got to know what your responsibility is, especially on a motion kickout from a halfback, which isn't particularly new to football. Okay, Miami Hurricane fans, real talk. I know when you heard eight turnovers, the automatic assumption is, well, you know what? That's got to be on the players. It's either interceptions, ball security issues, and fumbles. But in this instance... The University of Miami has been victimized repeatedly by Duke's pressure looks. And they're going to simulate pressure once again from a side. It's going to get the offensive line of Miami to react to a certain side, but it's just bait. And here it is once again. Eight-man look. Eight-man front. Who's coming, who's not? Well, that whole right side of the defensive line, well, they backed off into coverage Right here, he's actually going to be a low hole or a low rat player. And when you have two for one out here, okay, <laughs> that was the bait because here comes the bite and the boom. So you already got your starting quarterback injured essentially because of these pressure looks. And now your quarterback in the second half, your backup quarterback, takes a shot like this. Now, as a quarterback too, if I'm going back into the gun in this variety. I'm against this look, and what is my answer in terms of receivers? Where's my hot? Where's my redirect? Where's my dump? Where's my choice? What did you have Jake Garcia do against this look? Well, we'll look at it. One, two, three. Nobody's looking for the ball, right? Nope, nope, nope. This is a go route. It's already too late. By design against this look, and I say this all the time, know your worst nightmare. The play call, two drags and two goes over the top. Well, what can beat this? Well, when they bring more people than I can block. And they did. No check. Routes taking too long to develop. 
and he almost got another quarterback killed. I feel like you sense the pattern. <laughs> but I want to go back to the last clip because you heard me say, you know, hot choice this. What options do I have as a quarterback against certain looks? On third and six, this is exactly what I was talking about. Now, uh, it's 9.06 in the fourth quarter. You're down 38-21, so maybe this, this answer came a little too late. But what do you think Duke's going to do? Yep. They're trying to get the by me offensive line to make a call. Who's coming? Who's not coming? They got to assume everybody is. Again, University of Miami, they're going to go ahead and slide this out in this direction. They're playing kind of a man responsibility with the left tackle. All right. There was the running back's responsibility. He swings his head around. We still get somebody home. But now what happened in terms of the wide receiver quarterback route relationship? Well, now it's on key. Now it's on point. This is what we needed because – Jake, instead of a three-step drop and fumbling it, one step, balls out, just sit down, find the soft spot in his own. That's one way you could go ahead and beat the blitz. This one you got to put solely on the shoulders of the quarterback. Just a bad ball. There could have been a miscommunication. They're running an all-vertical concept. Where he felt the slot two was supposed to stay more vertical. In this case, the slot two went more inside breaking, and the throw just got away from him maybe, but Duke only rushes three, offensive line doing its job, and just the ball, just like I said, there's the in-breaking vertical, maybe some anticipation on the inside, just overthrown ball, and that's going to be a pick. Nothing really to break down, nothing too drastic there. Sometimes you could deduce, hey, wide receivers have responsibilities on how they're reading the leverage of the safety over the top with them. That's sometimes interceptions go on the wide receivers, Without seeing the whole picture, you don't know. Either way, that ball was sailed. And that was probably the easiest interception that safety is going to have all year. So in the last clip, I made somewhat of an argument. I would have lost big time in court that it was the wide receiver's fault. I think that was on the quarterback. This one, there's no debate. I'm not even picking up this case. I legitimately don't know what Jake Garcia is trying to do with the ball here. Not only was there a missed read, and we'll get back to it, I even watched this back a few times to see if it was tipped, but you're trying to hit this out at the top of the screen. You're about, I don't know, 10 yards short. One of the worst interceptions you're going to see on film. And then, again, reading the field because right there, I mean, this is going to break open all day long. What an open window. So we have an open guy sitting right pretty in the middle of the field, but we decide to go ahead and underthrow an out route by a good 10 yards. And then just let it play because – you know, this used to bother me, and everybody's, and you see them, you down, you down. But you know what? At a certain point, start winning some games, and they'll stop doing it. <laughs>